Yo, what's going on beautiful people of YouTube? Welcome to Dom's Media Zone. So today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the remote shooting function in Canon DPP-4. So that's Canon's Digital Photo Professional 4. Today we're looking at the remote shooting function. So that's when you connect your camera to Canon DPP-4 so you can control the camera remotely within the Canon DPP-4 software. In order to use this feature, you need to have the EOS utilities installed on your computer. I will put a link down in the description or you can just go to Google and type in download Canon EOS utilities. That will take you to a website where you can do a free download. I will show you that in the video. So the remote shooting function is really useful if you want to attach your camera to the software. You can then see through the software what you're shooting. You've got a live viewfinder and also you can do things like adjust the camera settings. So your ISO, aperture and shutter speed, everything can be done within the software, which I'm going to show you in this tutorial. So if you think this video might be useful for you, stay tuned and enjoy. For this demonstration, I'll be using my trusted Canon 90D. So whatever Canon camera you've got, you're going to need your camera and you're going to need the cable that you're going to end up plugging into your computer. So I'm using the Canon 90D, but on the website, you can see which models of cameras you can use. I'll show you that right now. So to download the EOS utility tools, you're going to have to head on over to the Canon website. I will put a link down in the description. If you're not in the UK, just Google Canon EOS utility download and it should take you to this page in the country that you're in. And then over here, you can select your product. So in my case, I'm going to select the Canon 90D, but these are basically the cameras that are compatible. I'm using Windows 10, the 64 bit. It detects it for you automatically. And I'm going to find my camera over here, Canon 90D. D, and then it lets me download EOS Utilities, the latest version, which was released on the 23rd of June. Download the software, install it. And once you've done that, let's head on over to the Canon's Digital Photo Professional 4. And then we're going to launch the utility software and plug in the camera to show you how to use all the tools over there. All right, once you've opened up Digital Photo Professional 4, you're going to see a button over here that says remote shooting. So remote shooting button, go ahead and click on that button. And now it's going to open up your Canon EOS utilities that you've just downloaded and installed. And it's going to ask you to specify remote shooting folder. So this is a folder where you can select where all the photos or videos that we're going to shoot remotely now are going to be saved. So in my case, I've got it in my desktop under EOS utility. You can just say file name, do not modify. So it will default the file name but if you wanted to change these folders or settings you could go ahead and select over here and settings over here i'm just going to leave it at default so i'm going to click ok and as you can see over here, we get this little camera control panel that came up. Now, this is something new that happened when we pressed that remote shooting button. So we're in the remote shooting section now, and it tells us the camera's not connected. What we have to do now is go ahead and plug our camera into the computer. All right, once you've seen the camera not connected message, the next step is to take your camera, point it at the subject or whatever it is you're going to be shooting remotely. Make sure the cable is plugged in. Take the other end of the cable and plug it into your computer. Now, as you can see, once we've plugged it in, it's going to take a couple of seconds. And as you can see now here on the screen, it's showing you Canon EOS 90D, so it has detected the camera. All right, now that we've got our camera plugged in and it has detected it, it also shows you the settings that are currently set on the camera. I've got the camera in photo mode right now, and these are the manual settings. I've got it in manual, and it actually shows you the settings. Over here, there's a shutter button. Over here, there's a create subfolder. So here's where you're going to be shooting your photos. You can create subfolders. Currently, I'm shooting into this EOS utility folder over here, who it's registered to. Mine's always on custom. And then over here, you've got two buttons you've got settings and you've got live view if i click on settings it brings up this little settings panel and if i click on live view it switches in my camera to live view so now i can see on the camera screen and on my computer screen what's actually going on i'm going to bring back the settings panel because it disappeared and there we go so now we've got live view so we're seeing what the camera's seeing and i've got my little russian doll as the model for today and then we've got the settings in here so let's go through some of those here you've got your autofocus 
it tells you that it's a remote manual mode right now here you got the shutter buttons if i just hover over this it actually focuses on the subject and as you can see this is very underexposed because my lighting is quite bad so i'm going to show you how we can change the settings in here so let's go ahead and try to increase the exposure a bit so i'm going to change the aperture to f1.8 because a lower aperture lets in more light so it should brighten our image up a little bit there we go iso controls the amount of light that gets in as well but remember Remember, the higher the ISO is, the more noise you're going to be introducing into your photo. So I'm actually going to drop the ISO to 250, which will make our image a little bit darker. But to compensate for that, we can decrease our shutter speed. So if I make our shutter speed, let's say 1 over 15, you can see it's already brighter. Let's go 1 over 10. Is that maybe a little bit too bright? Let's try 1 over 13. Yeah, that looks reasonably good for the low amount of light that I've actually pointed at our subject. I did that on purpose so that we can adjust the settings over here to fix the lighting down here you can see you've got your white balance so you can choose your auto white balance you can choose different profiles so say for example it was a sunny day and you were outside using this for whatever reason you can change the white balance profile over here so here you've got like an indoors profile uh, i like to leave this on auto white balance i think it looks all right and then over here you've got your drive mode so do you want a single shot do you want multiple shots do you want to use the remote timer i'm just going to leave it on single shot over here you've got your metering modes i'm just going to leave it on the setting over here and then here you can choose whether you want to shoot raw files raw plus jpeg and what size you want the resolution of the files to be i'm just going to stick with raw files for now and over here is a button where you can click and then you can select where to save your shot images do you want it only on the computer or on the computer and camera memory card so you can use this tool to shoot onto the computer directly or onto the memory card it's up to you or both this is a good option to know about and i'm just going to choose computer only for now all right moving on down here you've got your shooting menu so if i clicked on this first icon on the left hand side it actually tells you what picture style you're shooting in i'm shooting in standard right now if I click on this, I can change it to like portrait or landscape or fine detail. Let's try portrait. Let's see what happens. As you can see, it looks all right on portrait mode. So I'm going to leave it on portrait for now. And then over here, you've got your detail set. You can actually adjust the sharpness, the strength of it, the fineness, the threshold, uh, the contrast, saturation, color tone. You can adjust everything in here. So that's really cool. And over here, we've got something called the register user defined style. So if I click on this, you can see it actually lets us choose our style that we're shooting in right now and save it as a user defined. We've got three different tabs. So if for the first one, we make portrait, we could make the second one, for example, automatic if we wanted to. We could make the third one, let's say monochrome, if you wanted to be shooting black and white. And I'm just going to leave it on portrait for now. And then you've got here the white balance shift where you can always kind of adjust the colors. So if I move this all the way here, it will shift the color towards like a very red scale. This way we'll move the color towards like a blue scale and so on different colors. You can change your profiles. And as you can hear, there's some fireworks being shot outside because yesterday was the 5th of November which is Guy Fox Day and we have some late starters. All right, I'm going to click on return over here. And that's what we've got over here. Then if we click on the second icon, you've got shooting menu two. And here you've got a HDR mode, which I haven't used yet, but you've got things like your effects that you could add. I'm just going to cancel it. And then you've got focus bracketing. If you want to use focus bracketing, you could enable it here and number of shots. So it will take a lot of shots at the same time. And here you've got your focus increments. Maybe we'll do a video on these things another time. Okay, the next button over here is your flash control menu so you can control your flash functions over here so if we have a flash on we can go into flash settings and adjust them straight from here i'm not going to be using a flash for today so i'm just going to close this right now and then over here you've got your setup menu this over here is if your camera is set to a movie recording mode you could go over here and adjust additional settings if we were shooting recording a movie but currently i'm on photo mode so we're just going to leave that as is now here is where you can switch to movie recording and if we press that you'll notice it switches over and you can see now a recording button appears over here and it will tell us what kind of settings we're shooting with so 24 frames per second in 4k video 
I'm just going to switch that off to go back into our photo mode. All right, going into the live view window, you've got your live view and you've got a compose. So under live view, you've got also white balance where you can adjust over here. So depending on your settings, what you need, you can change the white priority manually by typing a Kelvin number over here. And over here, we've got our focus settings. So currently it's set on one point autofocus, but you could change it to like zone autofocus. And as you can see, it changes the focusing. You could go spot focusing. You could go face detection. If you're shooting a model or a human and some portrait photography, you can also change this to continuous autofocus. You can switch off eye detection and so on. So there's loads of settings you can choose here. If you go continuous autofocus on, it will automatically focus on a specific area for you. So I'm just going to switch that off for now. Cool. And another thing to point out, like say, for example, we've got one point autofocus. If we click on somewhere else in the photo, you can see it now focuses on the curtain because I've selected the curtain. So by clicking in the live view window, you can actually change the focus point over here. So it's really cool. You can control through here what you want to focus on. Down here, as I said, it's got the histogram. And over here, you've got the red, green and blue graph. So the histogram histograms for the different color channels. I'm just going to leave this on this one. And then down here, just to show you, you've got like a zoom function. So if I click on times five magnify, you could see it actually zooms in on the subject times five. And you can see the noise now. And plus it's a bit shaky because the camera's on the table where I'm moving the mouse. So you could even go to times 10 and it zooms in for you on the subject. Then over here, you've got the zoom in frame display. We can switch that off if we don't want to see the zoom in frame. So the zoom in frame is like if I click on times five now, that's the frame it's going to zoom in on. So let's actually switch that off. And then down here, you've got add an aspect ratio. So for example, we can change the aspect ratio. Say we wanted to shoot a square one times one, we can go ahead and do that over here but let's leave it how it was for now and then over here you've got display your autofocus points we can switch them off or turn them back on over here you've got rotate to the right and rotate to the left so if you wanted to shoot a photo by rotating it you could do that here you've got auto rotate and here you've got electronic level so electronic level if you click on it it tells you whether your camera is steady and level or not so I'm just going to switch this off for now. But there you go. You've got all these cool little tools that are available for you to use. But let's go ahead and try take a photo. So by hovering over this shutter button, it should automatically focus. And then I'm going to go ahead and press this button right now. And there we go. It's now loading the photo and it's done loading. And if I move this a bit, you can see it's been saved into our folder. So that's really cool. We've got our photo and this is basically how remote shooting works. Now, if I switch over to our movie recording, just to show you guys. So over here, now that I'm in the movie function, you can see the movie settings and there's the record button. So if I wanted to record this, I'm just going to hit record to start recording. And I can see now my camera recording light is blinking. And as you can see over here, it is recording. My microphone is plugged into the computer right now, so you don't see any sound recording, but it is making the movie right now. Clicking it one more time stops the recording. There we go. That's now how you record a video. And as you can see, some of the settings are slightly different here for the movie setup. And now that we're in the movie mode, you can also change your movie recording size, the actual frames per second and the resolution of the movie that you want to use. So I'm just going to close that right now. All right, just to show you one more thing, I'm just going to switch back into our photo mode. Right over here in this live view window, you've got something called Compose. And over here, you've got a whole bunch of more settings that you can go and play around with. So for example, you've got a show grid, show your guidelines if you wanted to use that. You can kind of move them around however you want to. Let's switch those off. And then here, show guides this way. So you've got a whole bunch of options here to help you compose your image. Uh, show overlay image is if you wanted to combine two images. So for example, if I click on show overlay image, or I've got an image me working from home here, just as an example, there you go, it will kind of like combine the two and you can enlarge or reduce and do all sorts of things to your image in the background. I'm just going to undo this and delete that. And that's basically what the compose does. It just lets you compose in your screen a bit better to make sure that you're capturing the right composition. And that's pretty much all I've got for this tutorial. As you can see, I had to change the battery because the battery died just in time as we were ending this tutorial. And I hope you've learned something and I hope this tutorial helps you out. And that's all I've got for this tutorial today. 
I hope this did help you out and I hope you learned something new and do stay tuned for many cool videos to come in the future. If you did like this video as usual do give me a thumbs up I really appreciate those and if you're new to this channel do consider subscribing I've got many more videos planned for the future. So thanks for watching everyone I'll catch you next time stay safe take care and goodbye. Thank <music> you.